So we're uh, coming up the hill from Ballyboden and approaching uh, the viewing point, which I think is a climb of about four or five hundred meters. I'm most of the way up, uh, but I thought I'd uh, turn on the camera so you can capture the suffering of the final step. Uh, I've bumped the bike into tour mode, which is the second from bottom. So that's given me a bit more of a hand. Uh, which you kind of need it because your the ascent here is quite something, although it really eats deep into the range. It's always a tough road as well because of the traffic on it. Although I'm coming up here late enough, so it's not too bad. I'm debating with myself as to how far I'm actually going to go. I have the bike fully kitted up, loads of water, food, a couple of cans of beer, it's a tent. <laughs> I even have the wetsuit. Uh, and basically, I wanted to do a test of all that for Scotland. And I just realised I left my hat back there. So getting up here was the primary objective, because that hill tests <laughs> how, how realistic it is to uh, cycle with the stuff I've added. And to add to the test, you can probably hear it, there's quite a nasty headwind. <laughs> uh, I also have the option though of keeping going, because I have all my gear with me. Uh, and the village, I've a route mapped out as far as Glen Malure, which is 40 kilometers away. Uh, that would probably be a bit excessive, but we'll see where it gets to. Bloody hell, the combination of the hill and the wind was tough. The only good thing about coming up this late in the afternoon is all the traffic's gone the other way, coming down the hill. So I don't have a queue of car behind, cars behind me, which I always feel bad about when that happens. Oh boy, and I can see viewing point just ahead of me. So, primary objective has been succeeded. Five points. Bloody hell. I can turn off here and get a break though for a few minutes, which will help. Oh, I decided I'm going to keep going for now, and we'll see where we get to. I suspect that once I get up here, it's going to be way too windy. <laughs> also, there's rain forecast, but sure. In for a penny, in for the round, as they say. I suppose it should be your own sense now. Yeah, so that was actually 407 metres. So not the 500 I thought it was. Uh, but there's another couple of hundred metres coming up between here and Glen Cree. Uh, some of which is also relatively steep. That, I think the section I've just done is the steepest bit of the entire route though. Uh, I don't know. I'm no good with uh, knowing what ascents are. Uh, but I think part of it is marked as a 17%, if I remember correctly. So again, that's as bad as it's going to get, basically. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of, Dublin's great like that. You've got the coast, which is mostly nice and flat, and then you've got the mountains, and they, that initial climb into the mountains, if you take this route, uh, is a real tester. Uh, I remember doing it as a teenager and it nearly killed me. Um, the, uh, you can also go up via Enniskerry, which isn't that bad really until you're coming out of Enniskerry up to Jouse. But uh, whatever way you go up to the Sally Gap, you're still going to be climbing up towards 550 metres, I think. So if you want to do that, the military road, there isn't really a way of avoiding 
the ascent even going taking the long way around so that's where the fun is isn't it <laughs> Flip the camera over in a bit and we can see what it looks like the other way around.